Yeah, they say it takes one kingdom to fall for another kingdom to rise. There is always a place where people are rejoicing and then a place where people are crying. That's just the nature of the world. Sometimes it's rain, sometimes it shines, sometimes it snows, sometimes it's windy, sometimes whatever wants to happen would happen. Uh, the same can be the story of Nigeria and Ghana right now. Every Nigerian somewhere in the world is celebrating is happy uh, because the beating and uh, discombobulated, dilapidated, you know, uh, team that is in excruciating pain in Ghana, the Ghanaian black star have been drawn against the super egos of Nigeria. And, you know, you could sit and say, okay, the World Cup qualifiers is about two months away and anything is possible so exactly two months away 22 22nd of january today so and uh, the world cup qualifiers is going to be 22nd of march so it's two months away nigeria goes to ghana first cape coast and then comes back to play in nigeria either in lagos or abuja depending on where the match will be holding and i'm um, most certain it's going to be abuja because the tesla Malugo stadium have been banned by FIF, by CAF and it has not been lifted that ban has not been lifted so most likely it's going to be in abuja that's not the the reason for this video the reason for this video is looking at the draw egypt plays against senegal i think it's going to be a 50 50 game senegal could be a problem because they have a team that it's hard to score against and then they also don't score that much so that could be something egypt at home is a different uh, kettle of fish entirely so when you go to cairo you must come with your scoring boot if you don't come with your scoring boot egypt can score you three to four goals can senegal equalize that and change it that's something that i don't know but uh egypt plays first so senegal will play the return leg at home it depends on what the score line will be and then you have the cameroon versus algeria game one of the things that is very very clear we look at the station cup recording from abia in garua looking at the cameroon team and the way everybody's rating them we pick up seven points in that group well everybody should do that uh, vincent abubakar have scored in every game in the last three games that they played in the group and they're going to play Comoros, the team that conquered and uh, destroyed Ghana. So there is a reason for them to be happy. But let's take note of the fact that uh, Cameroon have not played against any strong team in this tournament. They, they played against Zimbabwe. They depended on two penalties. And I'm, a good, I'm not going to sit here and have anything against the penalties that they considered because it wasn't as if the penalties were not deserved. It was well-deserved penalties. So uh, let's keep it uh, respectful and agree that, okay, they played against weaker side like Ethiopia, who anybody will beat in football. They are not a footballing country. And I think in the last game, we can see how when a team came up against them. Now, the argument is the fact that they've qualified. But Nigeria have also qualified with two games to spare. With a game to spare, and they still went on to win their last game. They are not Nigeria, they are Cameroon. Uh, we will see if we meet, because the draw says that if we keep winning, we'll meet them in the final. So we'll see how that goes. But until then, let's talk about the World Cup qualifiers. They beat and stay on that one while we're talking. So... Uh, Algeria also came to this tournament. Yes, they're missing a few players, a few key players in the team, in defense, and in midfield as well. But then, I think that Algeria, in the group that they find themselves, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Ivory Coast, Algeria, and uh, who are the other two teams that they played against? Uh, uh, Guinea, Equatorial Guinea, and uh, what's the first team that they played against that they had a draw? I think in those games, they have enough in them to have won the game. You can't have Mares, you can't have Slimani, you can't have Benaka, who was the best player of the last tournament in 2019, and not be able to conjure a goal. They didn't score a single goal. It's like France in 2002 World Cup. Great defending champion that completely lost the plot. And maybe it's the cost of the defending champion. I don't know. But if that team could not play against these teams... And then whoever is going to come might also follow suit. I don't know if they will sack their coach, but Ghana have already sacked their coach and they brought in three wise men to come around the affairs of the team. They might also have the luck that Nigeria already have right now after sacking uh, Genotro and then arriving with Iguavon, who's not turned the team of the fortune of the team around. But we'll still not make any progress. We're just in getting past the group stage. We're waiting for Tunisia tomorrow and see how that goes. But I think that in my own calculation, I think Cameroon will qualify. Now, in the politics of the game, because one of the things you always look, I always look at in football is that there is a football itself that you play on the field, then there's the politics of the game. In the politics of the game today, the Eto is being set up as the poster boy of African football in terms of administration. The way Amaju you know, fought and set himself up with Ahmad Ahmad and became poster boy and then Abana Abad, you know, did not know how they helped him from nowhere to become to get to where he got to and he abused it and he lost it to Patrice Musepe. But but that said, Eto Samuel Eto is being set up as the poster boy of African football. One of the great ways that they can work for him in the politics of the game is to make sure that Cameroon wins the 
uh, the World Cup qualification match over their opposition, which is Algeria, and Samuel Eto'o and the the team goes to goes to Qatar in November. Now there is the Ghana Nigerian game that we've been talking about, and I think that it's going to be a very easy game. Shatawale can shout all he likes; he can make all the noise he wants to make right now. He can have all the argument. We can give them all the jollof rice, both the Nigerian jollof and the Ghanaian jollof. They, they can have it all. But one thing they will not have is that World Cup ticket because Nigerians are going to Qatar to make as much noise as we're doing it. You know that in this what this Nations Cup in, in in Cameroon, there are more Nigerians in the stadium than any other country, even the host country. The Nigerian Supporters Club have four representation, and all of them comes in from diff, coming from different sides, and they are louder and louder than any opposition ever that you have in the African Cup of Nations. But then let's move to the other one. You have uh, DR Congo, Morocco. I've been praying, fasting and praying that no, they should not give us DR Congo. And everybody's like, oh, why are you saying DR Congo? After all, DR Congo did qualify for the African Cup of Nations. I'm stating here that DR Congo would qualify for the World Cup. Morocco can do all they want to do. Go back and bring uh, Ziyech and the rest of them. DR Congo will qualify for the Nations Cup, for the World Cup. Do you want to know why? Well, uh, you've got to stay with me all through this process. I'll eventually tell you maybe uh, sometime soon. But for now, let's just say that I see so, and you can argue in the comment section as best as you like. For as long as you're not throwing insults at anybody, you can bring your point and bring your conviction, say what you want to say. But this DR Congo team is going to the World Cup. As a matter of fact, the first team that have officially qualified for the uh, FIFA 2020 World Cup in Qatar uh, from Africa is DR, DR Congo. I don't know whether you agree or you disagree. But before I go further down, please, I'm begging you guys on this one. I need to grow. This channel needs to grow. This channel needs to stay afloat. Please do subscribe and click on the notification button. It will help us to grow. It's all we ask for. It's what we need from you. Please do that for us and uh, help us to get to the place that we're going to. Now, the final fixture the fifth and final fixture is mali playing against tunisia that game is a 50 50 game either side anyone can win the disadvantage for mali is that they are going to play first at home and then the politics of north africa will kick in unlike in egypt where egypt will play first and know that they have to go to west africa to battle against senegal and then cameroon also will play home first and then go back to algeria but it's not like algeria really do do well in world cup qualifiers they've lost at home in a lot of World Cup qualifiers, and also drop points at home in World Cup qualifiers, so I'm banking on that. But I think that uh, the North Africans in Morocco and Tunisia I better watch it very well because it does look like this is the kind of game that they would lose if they are not careful. All in all, I I would be saying that Egypt, Senegal is 50-50. Cameroon, Algeria, one-way traffic, it's going to be Cameroon going through. Yeah, And then Ghana, Nigeria, it's going to be Nigeria going through. I don't think that Ghana have enough in them to come come back from the disgrace of the 2021 AFCON in Cameroon in this 2022 January, how they got messed up. I don't think, I still think that the IU brothers are holding the team to ransom and I don't think that the new coaches will come in and be able to break that uh, stronghold and then set up their new team. I also don't think that Ghana even have star players, quality players scattered across the globe that will come up and form a new team. Yes, the Ghanaian league is uh, rising, but I mean, that's uh, going to be a very big gamble and a very big risk. But then anything is possible. Uh, when people use Nigeria as a, as a case study, remember that Nigeria had the quality players. It's just that a coach who used a system to shackle the players. Now you got a coach who has set them free in Austin Iguavo, liberated them. So it's easy for them, you know, to set sailing and be playing the way they are playing. People like uh, Moses Simon, Samo Chukwese, who is still not back 100% coming back from injury. And then you have Chidora Chid Educa, who will eventually have his time. And you have one of the best defensive midfielder in the world in Wilfred Didi. And then there's Frank Oyeka, who would start in any other African team currently in the AFCON, sitting on the bench. And then you have a rejuvenated captain of the team, talking about Tristekon. And Kenneth Omira, he was got a very calm head on a stable shoulder, as well as the, the best uh, left and right fullback in the African Nations Cup currently, in Zaidu Sanusi and Ola Aino. I think that we'll have a good team going. Then Taiwa Wani is so restless, he doesn't even care who you are. Look at what he did to Egypt. Forced them to stay at the back for 90 minutes for the time he stayed on the field. And then Umar Sodik, all of a sudden, as slow as people say he is, is coming into the plates 
uh, all of a sudden. And then you can't argue against uh, Kelechi and Asho. Talk anything about his attitude, his personality, but you can't argue against his football and his educated left foot. And then Maduka Okoye, who's considered only a goal in this tournament via the penalty spots. Uh, I think Nigeria have a very good team and pretty very, very young as well. Especially if you come into their mix, you see how young these players are. They can go on and go from uh, just winning the African Cup of Nations because I do believe I'm putting a bet on them to win the African Nations Cup. Go from the Africa winning the African Nations Cup to also qualifying for the World Cup and probably get past the round of 16 for the very first time, get to the quarterfinals. Who knows? See the semi finals. I don't think an African team can win the World Cup right now, but we do have a team that can go far. And in coach Austin Serezo Iguavo, I think we have a coach that can do it all. But then tomorrow we'll play against Tunisia. Before you know, we get to the World Cup playoff, we'll play against Tunisia tomorrow. I I am optimistic that Nigeria will win, but football is not played on paper. You still have to go do the job on the field. So let me run away and go to the training of the Super Eagles. I'll be back tonight for my diary section very late in the night. If you want to join me, join me then. Thank you.